Looks like uh, there isn't really that much interest in this. <laughs> Can people see? I'm told this thing doesn't work apparently, so uh, we're going to have to make do with. Uh, So I know people are busy, but uh, bear with me, this is just going to be a very short session. So, um, right. So, a short session, actually. Piano was supposed to come through, he tells me he's busy with something, he'll probably join us. I was almost thinking that people weren't going to come, you know, uh, because we, we we didn't we didn't necessarily part part ways on a on a good note, now, did we? Cheaters. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay, so so I was, I was just telling the others that Piela was supposed to be joining us. I don't know if he's going to come through, but it's it's fine. And also, you wanted to mention that my my the so this, this thing, this event, I'm going to talk a bit more about this event shortly. But, but this, okay. Do you want to move a little bit closer though? This space, okay. Can you hear me now? No. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, but if I say here, you wait, right? Is it not? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, well. Are there more people? Are there more people coming? Do you know if there's more coming? Where are they coming from? Sorry? Five minutes, they're late. It's fine. I think you spread the way if they don't come through, right? They will find us. Okay, so um, I was just saying that. Uh, so Piela is supposed to be coming through. I don't know if he is going to come through. He told me he was busy with something. So he's supposed to be a part of this. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was that this, this event itself, itself is organized by the CS department and the School of Education, our uh, least department. So the, the idea is to try and, uh, and have students from, from LIS, specifically students doing the B ICTs with education course and the people in CS doing those fancy fancy CS programs, right? Um, so there's, there's, there's this international event called the uh, ICDC event, it stands for the International Collegiate Programming Contest, right? Um, and so the way it works is that uh, you typically have universities participate in this event, right? And so they compete against each other. But the way the competition works is, um, it, it starts off at what they call the regional levels, right? So you compete at the regional level and then the best performing teams in the region will go and represent that particular region on the world stage, right? Um, we've not done this before at UNSA. This is going to be the first time, which is why things are, are not really well planned, or well thought through, right? And specifically, I'm making reference to the fact that ideally, we're supposed to have had training sessions for people that would be interested in this, right? So uh, training sessions maybe a couple of weeks before the event itself. The event is on the 26th, and I'll talk more about that just now. Um, so in an ideal case, we're supposed to have started training maybe three, four months ago or something. Um, but seeing as this is a pilot, this is fine for us. What we're just looking at doing is trying to see if we can um, have individuals participate. Oh, is that a new? Oh, it looks different. I thought it was a new person here. People have changed, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, right. I didn't know there was rugby at Unza, but is there a rugby team at Unza? Oh, I thought you from playing rugby or something. Uh, so, but because it's a pilot, there's no training session between now and the event. Right. The event is on October 26th, which is uh, Saturday after next week. 
Um, so that leaves us or you guys with um, a, a little over two weeks to, actually less than two weeks to prepare for this. But it's fine. It's just, it's like, look at it as a way of having fun, right? Trying to unwind after one year of mayhem, right? Okay, so, um, more details about the event that I'm going to I will share these slides with Pierre. I will probably dump them on the Moodle site um, for, I think, 2010 or something. Um, so just to, to give you a sneak preview, like I said, so the, the event starts at the regional level where you have teams competing at the regional level. Uh, and, and essentially, the, the, the regions are classified in such a way that you have teams that are um, a part of sites. Right? So you have sites like Onza and the CTOs for B team that are a separate site as well. Um, and then within those sites you have what they call teams. The teams are supposed to be made up of no more than three people. Right? So uh, you can form a team of one person if you want to. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Or Two people, but maximum is three. Uh, and I guess we should soon understand why, why three is used here. It turns out that uh, the, the, the team of three individuals who work on uh, you know, problem sets together as a group, right? Uh, and the way it works is typically when you're solving these programming questions, you need someone to be able to write the programs, um, someone to be able to think through the solutions if there's some you know, math involved, and then someone to make sure there's mathematical questions, right? Uh, and then you need this other person to be able to translate the math solution into the program and give it to the person who's doing the program and actually write the code. So you notice that it makes sense. Ideally, I mean, this, this kind of approach is, uh, I don't know if this was introduced to you, but there's this whole notion of pair programming where typically you have two people working together, but this is three, right? Um, and again, in terms of team composition, because of the timing, um, ideally, if it were up to me, I would have, I would have insisted that I get to choose who is going to be a part of which team? Like you know, identify people interested in being a part of this, and then uh, because if you, if you work with people over a long period of time, you know who is good at math, who is good at programming, and not just good at programming, but who is faster, right? Because it turns out that time is, is a factor here. Like you, you, you're, you can only solve this problem within a new situation. Uh, the context, the, the context usually takes place uh, in a span of five hours, right? So within five hours, like, you would be required to solve the main question, right? So you want to make sure that uh, you quickly solve through the questions. But anyway, uh, but the, the, the different, you know, like, approaches that people have used in so far as team composition is concerned, we leave it up to the students to decide on, you know, whom they would want to work with, which is the approach you're going to take looking at time, by the way. Um, or you can have you know, the mentors or lecturers uh, decide to say, you know, you, 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 you form team one, team two, and whatnot. Um, yeah, but when you're working through these problems, right, it, it turns out that uh, it's not like when you identify who's going to be writing the program, then they you know, expect that they'll be writing the code throughout the five hours and get tired, right? So what some people will do is uh, swap roles. That's the question number one. Person who was doing the math would probably be doing the, um, the coding, right? And the person who was um, maybe solving the math question would probably swap over to the other person. So, um, but whatever works for you. I guess between now and the contest, those that are interested, uh, once you identify individuals that you want to work with, um, then you can you can probably. Oh, thanks for coming. Just here. Uh, you can probably. Uh, and there was two you can probably decide on how you're going to wait, right? Um, so, so this, this screenshot really just shows you this, the so-called standings of the results from, from not just some stats from last year, right? Uh, you notice that um, the, the so-called South African regional contest, which is essentially Sub-Saharan Africa, is supposed to be Southern Africa. Right? comes out of this is South Africa, but it's supposed to be Sub-Saharan sub um, Africa. You notice that Sub-Saharan Africa was made up of 11 sites, right? 97 teams and 20 the schools at the universities here. 
Uh, and this makes sense, right? Ideally, for logistic reasons, what you could decide if you have a region like Osaka where you have a number of universities or AKA schools, you can just um, have all the teams coming in from Zikas, from Unza, from Unilas to form one site instead of having separate sites because they're in the same metropolitan city. Um, so you notice that uh, just 20 universities, the whole lot of sub saharan Africa, which is too small actually. Uh, like I said, uh, none, none of the investors in Zambia have participated, so this is excluding, excluding all the... Uh, how many universities do we have? Uh, if there was, if it was an exam, you would have failed. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. It's a, it's, a it's a it's over 50 by the way, I think 60 something. But, but not all of them obviously will offer competing courses, right? And not all of them would be interested. I mean, like a classic example is South Africa. South Africa has um, a little over 20 universities, but consistently throughout the years, only four of them have been participating. So called your own universities, but not that it matters. Um, okay. And then, so in case you're interested in the region, so this. this Map here just shows the different uh, regions um, as as, uh, as defined by uh, the ICPC, and ICPC, right? Uh, this is supposed to be Africa and Arabia, but it's split into two and the US, North America, South America, and the rest, right? Right, so like I said, for group composition, uh, ideally, if you're interested in taking part in this, in this event, what you have to do is uh, Form groups of threes, or groups of twos, or group of one, but no more than three. Um, uh, and then on the event itself, expect to solve uh, at least, or an average of eight, eight problem sets. Could be less, could be more, uh, but usually it's about eight problems that you solve through. And you solve these problems through uh, within five hours, at the end, right? And the goal is um, so. So efficiency optimization is not really a major concern for, for, for them. Um, what they're interested in is uh, you know, how, many, how many of the problem sets, how many of the solutions are actually correct. Right? So it's, it's about correctness here, not, not uh, how efficient uh, or how optimal the solution is. Yes? What are the nature of the Sorry? What are the nature of the Well, I'll talk more about that. And then there's also a link to some questions from last year and previous years. But they usually have really inclination and there's a little bit of math at all. <coughs> right, so the goal is just to make sure that you're working in a group of, group of three, you make sure that you solve as many problems as, as possible. And the, the team that solves the most problems is the winning team. If there's a tie, talk about this, if there's a tie, then you look at which team solved the problem in the shortest possible period of time. They win, right? Um, and then it turns out that there's a restriction as to which programming languages you're allowed to use. Which you can only use Java, C, C++, or Python. Right? And I guess we're in luck because uh, I'm told Java was, was used in 2010. As in, I used it in 2010, not 2010. <laughs> um, then, so this, this actual event, the original contest is going to be held on the 26th. So there will be teams from from this this particular group, hopefully we don't know, um, and then we know that there's there's uh, people that have expressed interest in the CS department as well. So there'll be teams from the CS department, um, and I, I think that uh, we haven't yet confirmed, but is it confirmed? Right? The, the event is going to take place in the CS department, um, second year lab, I think. <clears throat> and the the reason why it has to be conducted there is because. An environment, a predefined environment has to be set up. You know, so you're not allowed to use your own personal laptops. These, these machines are going to be used, have to be pre-configured in a certain way. Right? So things like uh, the only programming, uh, I guess the only tools that you find in compilers, in the compiler, are specific to this programming language. Um, and then also, this, this, I thought this was really interesting, but uh, the environment, it's supposed to be Linux, but not that it matters. It doesn't matter if you're using Linux or Windows. So the same thing. 
I, I thought I would share. Um, now, I, I never really got to, I don't know if Pierre has participated in the ICPC event before, like the view of a student. No. I never did myself, but, but what I did was I volunteered a lot when I was a graduate student. So uh, I think the last time I volunteered was 2017, so this snapshot taken in 2017. And um, so we, we, had, um, we had first years. The interesting thing about the 2017 regional event that was held uh, at the uh, UCT University of Cape Town site is that we had participa participation from first year, which was, um, I think, a bit of a record because before then, I think we rarely had uh, people in the first years kind of like express interest. So this would be like the equivalent of uh, our first years in ICT, the V ICT program, and the second years in the CS department. Second years in the CS department because they get to do uh, those common courses, biology, chemistry, physics and maths in first year, right? Um, that was pretty good. Uh, suffice to say that um, I don't think any of the first years managed to answer any question. It's, but it's fine, right? It's about having fun and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, interesting, but anyway. Uh, uh, and so it brings me to the next point, right? And I'm guessing, I'm guessing people are wondering here, but I, why the hell do I have to all the uh, participating in this, in this event, right? Why should I call that? Um, so how are you all think about what's happening? Um, you're getting into third year, right? What's happening after next year, once you leave this place, right? It turns out that when you leave this place, one of the things that you're going to have to do is look for work for some people, not just work. I mean, these days, I guess it's become um, kind of like an obsession for people to, to go for so-called startups, right? It's happening in Zambia, Bongo Hive recently, I don't know if people have heard about this, Bongo Hive is going to be funding 10 projects, right? FinTech projects specifically, they'll give these people $3,000, right? So if you have a cool project and you win, you get $3,000 and then free training, free resources for, is it a period of about four months? Free training, right? You have experts from all over, lawyers to help you out with legal issues and whatnot. But what I'm trying to say is, for you to be able to, to uh, take advantage of those opportunities, your CV is supposed to have certain elements, right? Certain elements that separate you from the rest of the pack. You know, what's so special about you? Oh, I participated in this programming conference. If I was hired, I would say, oh, okay. The person that, uh, not that I would be hired, maybe, you know, but this is a person that I would probably want to look, look at, right? Um, not only that, though, I mean, most of what you've been doing, I guess, I'm not sure about 2010, but Arguably, most of what you've been doing has mostly been uh, theoretical, right? You look at simple examples and whatnot. So, if I were you, I'd think about how exactly you practice most of these concepts that we've been using. I don't know if you've got your safety here or you've kind of talked about some of those fancy other structures and uh, I'm really into the world of probably not. Yeah, it's fine, you know, but just uh, the, the basics to do with programming, right? Um, and then, Again, if I were you, I'd still think about the future here. It turns out that at fourth year, um, you get to work on what they call a caption project. So this is usually like a group, group project. You work with colleagues. And so what an event like this would do is it would give you an idea of what you expect from working with other people, right? Pretty much something akin to what you were doing in 2034, I guess. But this would be more specific. Uh, I think this is more more related to ICTs, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so, okay. And then also, uh, the way to challenge yourself, I guess. I don't know. Uh, to see how good you really are. Maybe, maybe you've been getting an A plus in this group and you think you're really good. Well, take part in this and let's see if. Uh, <laughs> um, take part in this. If, well, not that there's anything wrong in. in well, but just compete with people from elsewhere, right? Um, and then I've always thought that I mean, events like this centered around having fun. I mean, after, what, eight, nine months of working and working and working, what better way to unwind than on the day after last day of class, you just take part in this thing. There will be food, you will be fed, which is nice, and what, I guess, I don't know. But, um, so, sorry? No. 
So the, the interesting thing is because of because of uh, this thing was was hastily done, right? And because it's a pilot, ideally next year the plan is we're trying to set, set the stage for subsequent events or future events. Like next year is going to be well planned. Uh, we've, we already have an eye out for people that could potentially um, donate money, right? Uh, organizations out there, um, and they always do this. It's just that we we have a limited uh, duration between now and the contest day. Uh, but next year, I think there'll be like prizes as well and things like that. It's not, it's not um, so, but it turns out that not everyone qualifies. Like, I, even if I wanted to be a part of this, I don't qualify, obviously. Kiela doesn't, right? There, there, there is a certain uh, set of elite criteria that they follow. So, uh, key thing is you should be enrolled in an undergraduate program that um, is a duration uh, that is less than five years. Right, and you qualify because this program is like four years long or something. Um, and then other things that you take into account is you must have uh, studied your tertiary education um, in 2015 or later, right? Not before. So, so if, if you are an individual who, after after school, you worked uh, at some different college, and different university, and you came to get your that um, after 2015. And then also, you should have been born in 1996 or later, right? Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's a compelling reason as to why it's like an order and so on. Um, so, in terms of the problem sets, there's a link, I will share these notes, but there's a link to sample problem sets so that you have an idea of what you expect if you're interested. But, but really, the, uh, the, the advantage with your group, right, is that you, you have people that could, could easily play the role, the people that are solving any math problem. Um, unlike people in CS, so I mean they do have some math courses, but but, but I guess you have a bit of an advantage. So it's, it's a math cooperation for the CS and uh, of, um, of reading, right? Um, but usually the, the problems are framed uh, more as like uh, uh, using this uh, for lower CS or something that you could pretty much easily understand, right? Uh, so things like uh, a problem that requires you to find the largest prime number, perhaps maybe so numbers up to 232. I mean, this wouldn't be that hard, right? All you'd have to do is, I don't think you need a, you don't need a, a person who, who is a math expert, a math minor to, to tell you what a prime number is. I mean, I know I wouldn't, but, you know, so you just think about what a prime number is and come up with an implementation in write your program, right? Um, I mean, granted, there are certain, like, the, the more um, algorithm-centric questions might be somewhat challenging if you haven't done algorithms, but it's fine. Um, and, and then, so once you are, you are, you are done, you know, answering, so you're waiting through this, you're waiting through any questions that you're done, it's just one or two, you submit it, um, and the, the, the submission is, is automated, obviously. Uh, but it, there's um, um, a group of anonymous judges that get to <coughs> respond to the submission by way of specifying whether it was correct, it was wrong, if there any formatting errors, you know, writing errors, or compilation errors, or you've exceeded time or something, right? So if nobody knows who the judges are, they're anonymous, right? Um, and there's this ritual where I don't know if this image I got was balloons, I think we haven't yet started, we haven't yet started solving the problem. But usually when we solve the problem, the problem is a car project, uh, balloons run out and then everybody knows that you solve that problem. And usually the standings are building up some of the projectors so that you see how the other teams elsewhere are performing in real time. And remember you'll be competing with um, teams in South Africa, in Angola, in you know DRC. Um, Right, so obviously, like I said, the ranking, the scoring is based on the number of problem sets that you've answered correctly. Right? 
and if, if, there's a, if there's a tie, so if you have, uh, let's say it's time up and you have three teams that have answered a total of three questions each, then you look at um, how much time each of the teams took to solve the problems. And the ones that solve the problem in the shortest possible period of time um, are the winners. But in terms of team composition, seeing as you're going to self-organize, for those that are interested, you want to make sure that as you're self-organizing, you don't, you, don't, you don't want to, if you can, if you want to see as you're self-organizing, but you don't want to choose your friend, right? You want to choose someone who is going to contribute to the team. You know how uh, wild, Af African wild dogs hunt, right? Apparently each, each dog has a role, you know? scout and you know the ones that are going to attack and run. so you want to make sure that the group composition is appropriate for the problems that are going to be solved. Um, and then like I said if you're using one computer right I would highly discourage you to just have one person coding for five hours right, at the time. And of course you're welcome to just stand up and relax and need to know and stop you. Like for five hours you can go as a team and just stand in a corner and just unwind right um, but what, what I would advise is you just rotate towards it's easier. Right? Um. Okay, but again, there are various team compositions here, and I already highlighted some of them where you get to swap. Uh, after question one, um, you change roles. After question two, you change roles, right? That way, everybody gets to experience uh, what's happening. Um, and this usually works in rotation of roles, usually works in. All the teams are good at all the different skills that are required. So everybody is fast at programming, at code. Everyone is good at solving the math problems. Everybody is good at translating the math solution into the program design. And the translation here is uh, what Pierre probably introduced as uh, pseudo code, right? Remember when you have a problem, you find a solution. If it's a math problem, uh, someone works through the solution, and then you need to come up with a uh, pseudocode of that particular solution, so that the person who's programming knows exactly how to translate that pseudocode into actual implementation. Um, yeah, but hey, whatever works for you, I guess. Also, we just kind of this. This is a C pilot, so. Um, so going forward, I guess I mean, between now and the 26th uh, of October, we we think. Um, this is daily delivered as well because we presented this to the CC half of the level. But we shall share the sample pro problems from last last year and the couple of years before. In fact, they're accessible here. Yes? Uh, is it one team to each other class or would there be multiple teams? You can have uh, as many teams as you want per class. Maximum possible number of teams if you want, if everybody's interested in participating. This is not compulsory. I mean, uh, different people are interested in different things, right? This is how life works. There's some people that probably hated 2010, right? I don't like this, I hope it goes away. Well, it's coming back in 3010, I guess. Surprise, surprise. And uh, what's software engineering? I don't know what that is, it's coming back as well. You know, So you better learn to love these things because they're not going away until you leave them, unless if you quit, right? But 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 what I was saying about being interested in this is that there are people that are, that they're not, they're not, they might not be a, interested in being a part of this, and that's fine. There is so much you can do in an environment like UNSA, right? So much, right? You just, the key thing is, the smart thing to do is to identify the things that excite you, the things that, are, that you think are going to help you when it comes to your career once you leave this place. The things that excite you, right? If, if uh, attending all parties is your thing, then work on that or something. I, I wouldn't encourage that myself, but to each his own. Okay, so. Um, what we are planning is to, because of the time, what we are planning is a practice session on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, but in the end, I provide you students to confirm these availability because we need access to the, um, the computer science lab. But if it's not available, what we can do is we can have the practice session in the uh, audio laboratory, I guess, if that should be able to do. But we'll have a practice session so that uh, once you choose your team makeups, on this coming Saturday or Sunday, depending on when Piera and Mayum are available, we shall meet and then the teams can work together. The beauty with that is that um, you get to practice on the problem sets and then even do a bit of research on the internet, even though 
um, on the contest date itself, you only have access to the manuals, not the internet. That would be cheating, right? No one likes cheaters anyway. Right? Um, right. So, so if you're interested in this, then again, I See, the other thing to think about here is uh, someone like mine who might be working on a project, right? And you know how you would identify people you would want to work with at this stage, at this early stage? This is something you could use. You know, he looks at the people that, you know, participated in this and who performed well and whatnot, whatever. But anyway, so you want to go through here, um, those that link this ton of resources there. This is the... Um, this is the UCT but this is the, um, the official regional contest website. So you find information about past regional contests and the rules for the regional contest here. Right. Uh, I'll share this slide. I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, before uh, questions, anyone interested in, we, we won't take video footage to say who said yes, but anyone interested in being a part of this before even seeing sample questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's 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 good enough. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, <laughs> it's just one day. It's a Saturday. I'm sorry if you are Seventh Day Adventist, but we can't uh, make an exception here. Right? It has to be Saturday. Um, on Saturday, uh, at the UCT side, the the Rhodes University side, the the Vit side. Uh, um, uh, the Stellenbosch site, all of them are going to be having this contest at the same time, at the same day. Right, so, yeah. So, like, for each year, they change the programming of the Saturdays, or...? No, it's so consistent, it's always been... Uh, I don't know if you have a chat about programming languages with uh, this unveiling here, but... It turns out that, I don't know if you realize it, but if you look at this, it's wrong, it's also for concepts, they remain the same. Right. So I, I guess one of the reasons why they, they have a restricted set of these languages is that most universities will, will use either one of these languages as like the core programming languages, right? So like the Or you can you can wrote, yeah you can use Java and this is this is interesting because uh, for for other departments like the CS department. They've been introduced perhaps to the view of C, right? C plus plus, I guess. So if if the team is composed of an individual who's good at Java and C plus plus, and you are rotating, you're using that strategy where you rotate rows, then the other person who is good at C plus plus will provide the implementation in C plus plus. But the disadvantage of that is you see, even if you are you are you're using a strategy where you only have one person doing the programming. What happens when he's stuck? When he's stuck, perhaps you need the other two to come in to try and debug, right? To say this is a problem. Now, if the others don't know C or C++, then there's no one to help you debug the problem, right? So, again, if I were if I were part of uh, a particular team, I would prefer that a language that every, every team member is familiar with is used for that reason. Or at least a language that at least two of the team members are familiar with. Right. With the syntax, at least. Things fail, right? I and mean, when you're working under pressure, you know, syntax error, you're confused. But what's the problem? Are there any other questions? Yes. Um, oh, yes. I, actually, so the environment I was talking about, you have um, IDEs that are made available. So, so you should compile, actually. Before you submit, you check if the program actually does execute, right? Correctly. Um, the other question is, when they see the... Yes. Any form of yeah, that's the that issue came up when we were presenting to the people at CS. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's, there's really no like, uh, certificate of attendance or something. But that's, I think that's something that we can easily do as a, as a university, right? Uh, it's not that hard. We can easily print out certificates of attendance if people want that. But but you see, when you when you when you when you are showing how many people are actually what if you sit where you're writing you're preparing your CV, there are certain CV entries where you don't provide proof. Like if you if you intend last um, last vacation period, for instance, 
I don't think they gave you a certificate of attendance at work, right? But, but what you do in your CV is you just have an entry to say, between this period I worked as an intern. So it's up to the person who is wanting to vet the information you've provided to reach out to those people to say, can you confirm that this actually happened? Do you understand what I'm saying here? But, but we can, I guess we can, seeing as uh, this comment came, came through from the CS department as well, we can easily print out certificate of attendance um, as an institution, so. Yes. Is there any extrinsic motivation? You'll be fed, you'll be food. <laughs> Sorry? Well, on water, I guess, but. <laughs> I don't know it's a joke, but uh, I mean, like I said right now, I mean, so. <laughs> we're still toying with the idea, because the thing is, because of timing constraints, we're still toying with the idea with Dr. Nirenda to see if we can at least buy uh, some presents for like the best performing team, second best, and third best or something. But, but that's still under discussion. Yes? It's so, in, it's so interesting. But if you think about it, right? Wouldn't you say this is extrinsic, though? Is this intrinsic? You think this is intrinsic? Yes, okay. I, I thought the others could be intrinsic, but but this one is actually extrinsic. I actually have something that you put to better use. It might not be extrinsic to you because you maybe already have a job lined up and. But when I was a student myself, uh, I had to fend for myself, and what helped me was, um, besides this stuff, but what helped me was the lines that I had on my CV to say, uh, second year vacation, I interned. Um, third year, I interned with a web applications development firm. You know, uh, second year, I interned with, uh, they used to call them computer center, but it's CICT now, right? That helped me. Right. You hope me land, land me the jobs anyway. At least you want something that will get you to the job. Right? These days, the degree is not enough. You're not the only one doing this. There are people at Zik College, there are people at CPU doing the same program, there are people at Mungushi doing this. There are 95, well, last time I counted, there were 95 of you in here. How do you get ahead, right? There, there, now, I'm not saying this is the only way of uh, trying to uniquely identify yourself. There are plenty of ways, right? You specialize in something that you think very few people are going to do. Like at fourth year, you decide to do, uh, well, I'm going to want to focus more on um, ICT tools that are used in an environment where you're teaching um, early childhood education type courses, for instance. That's you, right? That's one way of getting ahead of the path, I guess. But anyway, so no other extrinsic uh, factors. Yes? So, so one of the things that we are going to do is liaise with, I know my mom already knows what needs to be used there, but we'll liaise with, because it's a part of the team as well, with Pierre to find out which IDE people would prefer, and that will be installed for you. So the tools that you're familiar with will be installed on the thing. So it won't be like you have to start fidgeting around with uh, like an IDE, so you must use this, it's nothing of this sort. So like uh, they'll install, what ID is Eclipse? I don't know what they use these days, but um, yes. It's it's not possible because uh, so these dates are set by by the individual they call the ICPC regional director. They are regional di directors for these different. When arriving at the date, obviously, you, you can't please everyone. So like, for instance, I think all the city folks or some other people are very university, they won't participate because it's exam time during that period. And for them, the venue that they are wanting to use for this is going to be used for exam, so they won't be able to participate. Um, so we don't have control over pushing the. In the future, we might have control because it turns out that if, if you have uh, significantly larger sites in your country, and because you have these sites in different countries, what you can do is you can request that you you hold your own separate contest. So you would have your own separate contest on a different date for CPU, Unza, Mungushi, Unilas, Rusangu, 
um, rock view or something, uh, all those different 60 plus universities, 61 actually. Yes? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean the Huawei approach is, is different. I mean the their goal is to train people in networking skills and so the assumption they make is that the people that are presumably going to be a part of that competition, I don't know if you're making, if we're talking about the same competition, uh, people that might not necessarily have any networking skills. In here, the, one of the reasons why we're giving this presentation to you guys is because you've done 2010, one year, or well, eight months of 2010. Um, we can't, we haven't even attempted to reach out to our first years, although we do know that there's some pretty good and smart students in there, because they don't have experience programming. You know, so sadly we can't extend. I, I wish it were possible to extend the date. But even if we were to extend this date, after exam, people want to go. Do you understand this? So, so the moment you're done with exam, people are going to leave. The, the only other time we would have had this was uh, December. Do you understand? Because last day of exams is 29th, right? Um, so it will have to be December. It's sadly, but we do wish you can join us. Uh, you know? Even if you think the problems, the sample problems are hard, hey, join us. Okay, if there are no, yes. Unfortunately, well, you'd have to motivate for, like I said, you'd have to provide a good enough reason for why. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we can request. We can take this offline. We can we can chat together with Pierre, and then I can try and see if I can we can chat to the ICPC director, regional director, and then we can be a part of this if this affects you. Yes. Yes. I can just say it's real time about getting yes. Yes. So the event normally starts at uh, the the ritual is like so. Um, eight hours registration. Eight to nine is registration and whatnot. And for the people that would be interested, once you send through the team compositions, we'll create, create your teams and then we'll send through further details of uh, the schedule for the practice session and the final session. But so you have registration, um, and then you, you, are you have the mock contest, so you attempt like a mock exam, mock questions, prepare you for the actual event, and then you, you perform the actual event. So during the actual event, the results are beamed up in real time. So as other contestants elsewhere, other teams are solving the problems. You get to see which teams have solved the problem. Uh, no, there's no naming and shaming. It's not like there are nicknames that are given to teams, by the way. So it's not like we we'll know that uh, you know this. This is uh, a team where Alex is a part of, and they haven't answered anything. Oh, and maybe they are opposite, right? But. Yeah. No, so it's um, so it's it's you compete at the regional level and then you go and compete in the world stage. That's how it works. Um, so no. it's the the idea here is you and by the way the regionals are going to be in Moscow in is it May twenty twenty. The idea here is um. You, you're trying to filter out and make sure that the people you have as as few teams as you can possibly have at the world stage. And, and that makes sense for us, right? You know, like, imagine what would happen if we said we're going to pick a best performing team from UNSA, CBU, in an event that all the 61 universities in Zambia compete. You'd have 61 teams, winning teams from each of those schools, right? 20 plus teams from South Africa, a ton of universities in Angola, DRC. So the, the, the I guess the most optimal of your is to pick the best team from this South uh, Africa, North Africa, and uh, the Arab world, and then South America, you know, South American 
So yeah. Yes. Yes. No, but Abraham, I just said that. Uh, I just said that. No. No. In the past, by the way, things have changed slightly. In the past, what used to happen is, um, is the uh, I guess money is tight now, so there's no such thing. So there's no, there's no, there's no money. No, so which is why I said, which is why I said, uh, maybe you came late. Maybe. No, I'm not promising anything yet, but. Uh, no, but, but I'm promising food, right? Food and water. But what I, what I also said was that, uh, was that uh, Mayum, Mayum and I and Pierre are still thinking about what prizes we can give out to the maybe the best performing team, second best and third best. Maybe it would be money, I don't know, but think about this. Yes. Just a minute, yeah. It's not possible for, it's prob for I mean, what are, the, what are the odds that you have five teams answering questions in the same duration of time? Not possible. You see, you have, let's say you have eight questions, and you have five hours to answer that, uh, those eight questions. It's not possible that all the five teams that answer all the questions would have answered question one within one minute, question two within two minutes, all of them. It's not possible. They'll at least, at the, at the very least, there'll be maybe a difference of a second or a minute, which is why I said if there's a tie, you look at time. Who solved the question in the shortest possible period of time? So how many teams are in here? As many as we can. It depends on how many teams from here, how many people from here want to participate, how many teams are going to form from here. So people will express interest. If you are interested, you shall send an email to Pierre and myself, CC me, and then we shall create the team detail. We'll, we'll start with the back and then we'll come yeah, to so Oh. So this is what you're talking about. You're uh, yeah. Uh, when answering the questions, are you allowed to, to, to research No, you only have access to the manuals. The manuals. You remember the, the JDK manual? Sorry? Sorry? No. No, there, there's nothing like referring to the internet and no. Yes. It's groups. So from this class, right? Okay, let's say, let's say. Uh, we had a show of hands here about, let's say, 15 people expressed interest. What that means is that the 15 would have to make five groups, right? Five groups of three each. Unless if you decide to say there's a group which prefers to, to form just a, a group of just two people, one person. So we can have as many groups as, as we possibly want to. It's up to you. So if you want, the three of you then can decide to say, we will work together if you want. For some people, maybe they, they've been working on certain things with people maybe in 2034 and you've identified people that work uh, in a way that you like or you prefer, you could try and talk to those people and say, can we form a group? If you want, you can form a group that is composed of people that you are friends with, it's up to you. Um, Whatever works for you. Okay. Is there any are there any other questions? Or I thought this was going to be like a fifteen minute long session, but okay, it was nice seeing you. Hopefully we get to uh, see a number of teams participate from here. And if that's the case, details of the Saturday event will be sent through uh, to the teams. See you on Saturday if you're coming. All right.